Uh, first of all, when I was the Secretary of Defense, I made a special visit to Pakistan and to India, pleading with them not to, to test, and, test and deploy their nuclear weapons, arguing not so much that it would be bad for the world, which I thought it would be, but I thought it would be, make it more dangerous for, for themselves, and more likely that one of those countries itself would be confronted with a nuclear attack. Obviously, I lost that argument. I was not, not able to persuade them not to do that. So Pakistan and India did go ahead with the nuclear weapon program. Uh, now we're confronted with several other countries wanting to go nuclear, North Korea and Iran in particular. If those two countries additionally go nuclear, I think the floodgates are open and, and we've lost any ability to control nuclear weapons. And if that happened, the probability of they're being used in our country and in other countries, I think it becomes very high. So I think it's a very bad development, and I'm still, but I'm still, in terms of the tactic, what to do about it, my tactic is still trying to hold back the proliferation and trying to get the major nuclear powers, the United States and Russia, to start decreasing the, the nuclear weapons that they have. Last September, we held a conference here at Stanford. It was hosted by George Shultz, who had been the Secretary of State during the Reagan administration. And the conference was held on the 20th anniversary of the so-called Reykjavik Summit. You probably have not heard of the Reykjavik Summit, but a little more than 20 years ago, there was a summit meeting between President Reagan and President Gorbachev of the then Soviet Union. And at that meeting, the two presidents actually discussed completely eliminating nuclear weapons and the missiles which, which delivered them. It was a uh, only time in a major conference of that sort where this was even discussed. Now, the bad news is, is that they were not able to come to an agreement. It founded on actually on technical details, which is, uh, I think, too bad. But in any event, they were not able to come to an agreement. And most people consider this Reykjavik summit a failure. But Schultz and I thought the ideas that were advanced at Reykjavik were fundamentally important. And therefore, we had this conference on the 20th anniversary to ask the question, can we revive the, the, the vision of Reykjavik? And the answer we came up with at that meeting was yes. We followed it up with an op-ed piece in the Wall Street Journal arguing to, to do that and arguing the steps that needed to be taken in order to get there. Uh, that op-ed piece got very strong and positive response. It was signed, by the way, by myself, besides uh, Secretary Schultz, by myself, uh, Henry Kissinger, and Senator Sam Nunn, all of whom, all of whom spent much, much of their career developing and promoting nuclear weapons. And now these are four people coming out and say this is a time to totally eliminate the nuclear weapons in the world. And it laid out a series of 10 steps that had to be taken to do that. This fall, we're going to be having another conference at Stanford. And the purpose of that conference is to have detailed, uh, thoughtful papers on each of those 10 steps, what it takes to actually accomplish those steps one at a time. And um, I'm, I'm expecting significant and positive results from that meeting. So the short answer to the question is the nuclear danger is greater than ever today, and we should continue to redouble our efforts to try to find ways of eliminating nuclear weapons in Pakistan, in India, in North Korea, and in the United States and Russia.